us through the DART mission specifically. Great, thank you so much. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about why these asteroids were chosen for the DART mission. Um, first and foremost, these asteroids are not a threat to the Earth. They are not a danger to the Earth. They are not on a path to hit the Earth in the foreseeable future. That makes them appropriate target for a first test. But what really makes these asteroids ideal for this first test is because it's a double asteroid system, just like the name of the mission says. There's two asteroids here. There's Didymos, the larger one. It's 780 meters in diameter, and it has a small moon asteroid that goes around it. It's named Dimorphos. It's 160 meters in diameter. And telescopes on the Earth have been looking at this double asteroid system for decades. Decades. Because of the telescopes here on the Earth, we know that this smaller Dimorphos goes around Didymos every 11 hours and 55 minutes, just like clockwork, and we've been watching that for quite a while. So what DART is going to do is it's going to come speeding in really fast, 15,000 miles per hour, and it's going to target onto Dimorphos, the smaller of those two asteroids. Now DART's also catch, carrying Lichia Cube, which is a CubeSat contributed by the Italian Space Agency. It's kicked off 10 days in advance, and it'll fly by after DART's collision roughly three minutes. And it'll take some spectacular images of the ejecta that we'll talk more about later. But now what we've done is the DART spacecraft is totally destroyed. Lichia Cube is long gone. How are we going to know how much we deflected this asteroid? Well, we're going to use these same telescopes here on Earth that have already been looking at this system for decades, and they're going to turn their gaze back on this asteroid system. So if you think about it, the DART spacecraft, um, the main body of it, is about 100 times smaller than Dimorphos, the asteroid that it's targeting. So you can see this isn't going to destroy the asteroid. It's just going to give it a small nudge. It's actually going to deflect its path around the larger asteroid. So we're demonstrating asteroid deflection in this double asteroid system. And it's actually just a small nudge. It's only going to be a change of about 1% in that orbital period. So what was 11 hours and 55 minutes before might be 11 hours and 45 minutes or so. We're not sure. That's one of the main measurements, and that's the goal for the DART mission here. Now, DART is all about testing this technology, doing this for asteroid deflection, and importantly, doing this first test now before we need it. If there was an asteroid that was a threat to the Earth, what you'd want to do this technique with would be many years in advance, decades in advance, such that you would just give this asteroid a small nudge, which would add up to a big change in its future position, and then the asteroid and the Earth wouldn't be on a collision course. And using this double asteroid system to develop this capability, take this first step to being able to deflect asteroids in the future, um, is, a, is a really a smart and a safe way to do this first test. Thank you so much, Nancy. We are moving on to Elena Adams, who is going to walk us through the road to getting to the asteroid. Thank you, Karen. So uh, we have been developing DART at the Johns Hopkins Applied Physics Laboratory, or APL for short, for uh, about five years. And um, since we have a lot of partners all over the world, including the Italian Space Agency, who are providing us a small CubeSat that we're going to carry on top of our spacecraft that we're going to release about 10 days prior to hitting Dimorphos. So we've been in development uh, for about five years. About a month uh, ago, we went to our launch site at the Vandenberg Space Force Base, uh, where we're going to uh, stay for another three weeks, since this is launch minus a 20-day briefing. We're going to stay there for another three weeks, um, uh, completing our tests, getting ready to load parameters. We just loaded our propellant. Uh, and uh, in 20 days, we're going to lift off on the SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket. Uh, one thing I want to say is that we're going to be launching, you know, you might have heard 23rd or 24th. Well, the point is that, is that we're launching on the 23rd in Pacific time, uh, late in the day at 10.20 p.m. Uh, if we launch um, on our first day of the launch window, or on the 24th, uh, which is... Uh, uh, Eastern time at 1.20 a.m. Most of the launches are late at night, as always, just for the press. So, um, so we're launching. Um, our period is actually, our launch period is actually pretty long for a planetary launch uh, period. It's uh, from the 
uh, November 24th all the way to February 15th, so we could launch at any time during that time. We will spend 10 months on cruise, and we will get to Dimorphos right as Dimorphos is actually closest to Earth. So we could do the observations that Nancy just talked about uh, using the ground-based telescopes. And we can also do other things, such as stream video back to Earth of our impact, and that's going to be pretty exciting. So over the 10 months, uh, we're going to do a lot of different tests using our telescope called Draco, calibrated, make sure that it all works. Uh, also demonstrate some new technologies for NASA, such as the next sea ion thruster, uh, which is shown right here, uh, glowing blue, and, uh, and also the rollout solar arrays. As we said, about 10 days prior to uh, arrival at Dimorphos, we're going to let go of the Leecher Cube, and Leecher Cube is going to follow us in. Now, about four hours in before we hit, we're going to turn on the smart nav technology, and that is one of our new technologies that we're demonstrating for NASA. That's what actually allows us to guide ourselves into the asteroid, because we don't see Dimorphos at all until about an hour in at which point uh, we will stop uh, tracking Didymos, which is the larger asteroid, and we switch over to Dimorphos. And it becomes, you know, it's just a little pixel in, on our camera, and the whole time the spacecraft does everything autonomously, it just follows in, and then we hit. And then that's it. That's DART, and then the telescopes come. And then we make impact. So to tell us about that is Andy Chang. What happens when we actually get to the asteroid? Yeah, thank you. The DART mission is about demonstrating deflection of an asteroid, changing its course, and doing it by hitting it with the spacecraft. So DART has to hit the spacecraft, the DART spacecraft has to hit the asteroid, then DART has to measure the amount of deflection and then we want to understand why that deflection came about, how it works. So it's all about measuring the momentum transfer. How much momentum do we put into the asteroid by hitting it with the DART spacecraft? And if one day an asteroid is discovered on a collision course with Earth, then we have an idea of how big that asteroid is and how fast it's coming and when it will hit, that kind of information then we will have an idea how much momentum we need to make that asteroid miss the Earth. And so if you want to do that with a kinetic impactor, we also need to know how much momentum does a kinetic impactor put into an asteroid. So that's what DART will, that's what DART will tell us for the DART impact. And to do that, we're going to be measuring, in addition to the telescopic measurements of the orbit period change, of the Didymos system. We're going to be measuring with the cameras as we come into the uh, target where we hit, what are the impact conditions, so what kind of terrain, is it sloping, are there boulders nearby, what kind of terrain we hit, and then finally we'll have Litchie Cube take, take pictures of the impact and to measure the impact ejector. So Litchie Cube is released by DART. It's just a little guy, it's a briefcase size asteroid. It'll fly by Didymos on its own, and then it will turn around and will take pictures of the DART impact, of the ejecta. Um, we need to do this because the DART impact at 15,000 miles per hour is going to blast tons of material, many tons of material, off Dimorphos, maybe thousands of tons. And we need to know how much material there is, how fast it's going, and where it's headed. So with that information, together with the information from the DART cameras on where we hit and what the impact conditions were, that's what we'll use to determine the momentum transfer from the DART impact. So Lucha Cube is just such an exciting mission. It's the first deep space mission for the Italian Space Agency. What a way to start a program. It's unbelievable. I'm really excited. Thank you. Thank you so much. And now